Captain's log, stardate 57931.4. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented ion storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. I know I am. Perhaps more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy. The nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the Resolute, Jara Ryder. I know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew. problem I uh I'm not great with flying but these little shuttles are the worst here's a tip don't close your eyes you'd think that would make it easier but it only makes it worse look out the window pick a star and just focus on that I'll give it a try Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Jara to step in at the 11th hour like this. But if she's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy, she'll be the XO this ship needs right now. Star base on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. Uh, Commander? I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh, yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Pintaris 5. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class. I, I mean, all time. In the history of the Academy. Really? That's quite impressive. Thank you. It was tough. But, you know, I set my mind to it, and it paid off. Please place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds. Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? You... Absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. You you finished in what? Like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> now I'm really 
it, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, I, I didn't realize before. I, I just came off the shuttle and was glad to be on solid ground. The pleasure is mine, Ensign... Paul Calloway. Good to meet you. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. Good day, Commander. If I remember my briefing, Commander Ermont is a bullion, so I'm looking for someone with blue skin. Starbase 128 has four docks. I'll replicate myself a meal once I'm on board. Excuse me, have you seen a bullion around here? Yes, sir. Right back there, near the replicator. Ah, there he is. Thank you. Happy to help, Commander. Excuse me. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Rydek. I'm Commander Jan Ermott, Operations Officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. It was a bit bumpy, but otherwise okay. Now, my apologies. This storm is unlike anything I've seen before. We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer vacancy at such short notice. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, we're lucky you were available to us. Coming from a premier starship and all. To our little research vessel. I'll do my best to live up to expectations. Well, I'm sure you'll do just fine. And if I can help in any way, just let me know. SS Resolute. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half, venting plasma, fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limits. It destabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble deformed. We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but... It was more than she could handle. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. I can't even begin to imagine what that must have been like for you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It does weigh heavy. There are some things you can't forget. It's been six months. What's the attitude among the crew now? Unsettled. But I hope that a new mission will help them move forward. If not, move on. Listen. I realize you've known Captain Solano for quite some time. And I'm glad you're ready to bring your best. But I should warn you that when the captain announced you would be the new first officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake, that he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly at first. Until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. Thank you. Always good to have a sense for what you're walking into. I just thought you ought to know. I appreciate it. Starfleet has assigned us a high-priority mission to the Hotari region. I'll let the captain brief you on board. I know he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? 
We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. that. I thought that thing was totally fried. Nice work, Carter. Nothing to it, Millie. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering. Like, now. Sense in zero G. You're welcome. So clean I can see myself. And you know what? Not half bad. Carter Diaz. Engineering. I heard the new Exo just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovok called us down for, it's something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. You and me working together? We can tackle anything he throws at us. Your optimism is positively contagious. like we got here before. Lieutenant Commander Chovak. We were just looking for you, Commander. Petty officers Ed Salar, Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. A point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Ed Salar on repeated occasions. Commander Chovak, isn't it true that if we were almost late, it categorically means that we were not late? That is correct, Mr. Diaz. I mean, if anything, Ed Salar and I are following the schedule to the letter. Yes, perhaps I should adjust the schedule accordingly. So, I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? 
Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. But this ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. Whatever it throws at us, we'll be ready. We've got the best chief engineer in the fleet. I am a Vulcan, Mr. Diaz. Flattery is not necessary. All that I require is that you do your job. Right now, that entails critical preparations, because long-range sensors show that these disturbances will be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Roger Commander Chobok. All hands on deck. Oh, uh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chobok said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every warm body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. Now you gotta have some faith, Nelly. Starfleet Command wouldn't send us out if we weren't ready. Six months ago, I probably would have said the same thing. But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Excuse me. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's got to be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. They seem all right. Something that happened six months ago while they were off on another ship? Well, that's nothing to hold against them. Yeah, you're right. I guess getting a little new blood on board doesn't hurt. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda! You weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'm gonna take the high road here, pretend you didn't say that, and welcome you aboard. He's a better diplomat than I am. He still owes me a bottle of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can rustle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. Here, let me help you. <sighs> Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in the security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa. Good to go. See you on the other side. Activating magnetic souls. Captain Solano should be here momentarily. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Kobliads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of Doridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. 
And we have plenty of duridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the replicator. He's still got a thing for trains. The warp engines of their day, apparently. I can't believe he keeps this around. Don't even know where mine is. The first mineral Captain Solano ever discovered. Always was the nostalgic type. Can't wait to plot a course myself. Just a sip of something. Rack the Gino. That sure has a kick. Jara Ride. <laughs> Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the Academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrot Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. The regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The arrival of a first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. But, unfortunately, we've had our hands full with the refit. You can spare me the pomp and circumstance. There's plenty of work to be done without all that. <laughs> you always had a work ethic like nothing I'd ever seen. That's just what this ship needs at the moment. As I'm sure you've heard, We've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. I assume you mean the accident. That's right. The tragic accident, really. We were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 teradynes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained rate of speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there, within our grasp. <sighs> Until it all went so horribly wrong. We pushed her too hard and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system, creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship can handle. It was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make, and I have to live with the consequences. We all know the risks when we sign up. There are no guarantees, as much as we tell ourselves otherwise. True, but as captain, my job is to mitigate and manage the risks as much as possible. And that's where I failed. In my defense, I will say, I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. There was a lot of pushback from my former XO, and I, I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. 
we can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission. I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggest it's several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record. A total anomaly like nothing we've seen before. And you'll never guess where it leads. Hatari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater. But the diplomat will brief us on the details of the rendezvous. But are we prepared to embark on the mission? As much as I'd like to think that's true, I have my doubts. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive, so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying. You have my full support. Thank you. But I feel like I still have so much to learn. You'll have plenty of opportunity. And if you're willing to put in the work, I'll do everything in my power to help you along the way. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. attention for a moment. I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydak, our new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of? Well, what he lacks in humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our chief science officer come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydak, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian, who's been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some time, and I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. That's very kind of you to say. I'm happy to be here. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliad. Because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. And you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. That's very kind of you to say, but enough about me. We have a lot of work to do. Oh, yes, of course. And then, of course, you've already met Commander Ermont. Please, do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase, have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours, 